Hi, my name is Trisha Jong and I'm a Tivoli Storage Manager Technical Evangelist. Today I want to talk to you about how Tivoli Storage Manager 633 and 64 can utilize complex password support. Uh, complex passwords being things like understanding capital letters versus lowercase letters, um, being able to monitor how often a password is used, um, being able to lock a user out after a certain number of failed attempts to enter a password. The way that Tivoli Storage Manager is implementing complex password support is by working with LDAP and either Active Directory or Tivoli Directory Server to provide the complex password rules and the complex password checking. Now Tivoli Storage Manager can set a complex password for an individual node or an individual admin, or you can choose to set it for all of the TSM nodes or all of the TSM admins. Um, the Tivoli Storage Manager complex rule enforcement is currently not what is called a single sign-on, where that particular um, corporate user is able to use one ID and one password for all of their applications across a corporate website. Instead, we're just being able to share these um, complex passwords amongst multiple TSM servers. Uh, some of the passwords that you might, the complexities of the passwords that might be set by the Active Directory server would be, for instance, the minimum password length or case sensitivity on password. So this type of um, rules get set in the external directory and then any of the admins or nodes that have authentication set to LDAP will then have to utilize and obey by these password rules. So let's go ahead and take a look at an actual TSM server that has password authentication installed. The first th thing that's going to have to happen is the Active Directory administrator is going to have to set up a base DN for Tivoli Storage Manager to use for the authentication of its passwords. So you can see here um, a base DN of TSM and then a user of TSM admin was set up. And these are, are arbitrary names. Um, they don't correlate to any host names or actual TSM administrator names or Windows logon names or anything like that. But what you do have to do is have this TSM admin have enough um, permissions to work with the, the eventual administrator and node so that have LDAP authentication turned on on the TSM server. The next thing that will have to happen is that the TSM administrator will have to import a LDAP certificate onto the TSM server. And so they can get these certificates in different places, including going out to the certificate server and requesting the server from there. When this server has been, uh, when this certificate has been downloaded into the TSM server directory, you'll then import it into the CERT KDB using a GSK8 command. And we've already imported it, but we can take a look at it out here. Uh, here we have the Active Directory Certificate, and if we wanted details on that Active Directory Certificate, we can issue this GS8 command, which will show us, for instance, um, who this was issued to and the subject of it, as well as the validity of the certificate. So once the LDAP administrator has set up a base DN for TSM, we've imported the uh, LDAP certificate to the TSM server. We then need to figure out the exact specifications for this base DN. And if you issue a DS query user command, you can see we've got the CN equals TSM admin. Remember inside of the Active Directory we had set up TSM admin. The OU equals TSM, which was also set up inside of our Active Directory. And then DC equals enablement and DC equals local, which is specific to the IP settings on our um, server here. So once you have that information, you'll go into the DSM serve option file and you'll set up this LDAP URL um, line right here. Now what's important here is if you have multiple LDAP servers because it's set up in some type of high, high availability environment, you'll probably have multiple LDAP URL lines inside of your DSM serve option file. Uh, that way if one LDAP server goes down, TSM server will automatically try another um, LDAP server. So once you've put this LDAP URL option in the option file, you'll save the option file, you'll restart your TSM server, and then you'll go into your TSM server when it restarts, and you'll issue the set LDAP user. Once again, we're telling which 
TS, which administrator user we set up inside of Active Directory, um, as well as what the base DN information was. We also will set the LDAP password um, that was spe specified inside of Active Directory. And now we can go ahead and we can specify which TSM servers, um, TSM server administrators or TSM client nodes we want to use authentication method of LDAP. So in order to update those administrator nodes, you can simply issue update admin. In this case, we're going to update the tape administrator's authentication to LDAP. Now when they first update to LDAP, they're put into a status of LDAP pending. And we can see that if we do a query admin um, tape admin format equals detail. And here you see authentication is LDAP pending. And the reason it's pending is because the tape admin's password hasn't been set to meet specific LDAP requirements yet. There's two ways that that password can be reset. You could do another update command or you could have that at the next time that the tape administrator logs on they get prompted for a new password and you'll see here it says, well, your password is expired, enter, enter a new password. Well, if we enter a password that's too easy, one, two, three, um, it's going to complain and say, you know what, that's, that just doesn't work. It's not valid enough. It, it doesn't meet our new standards. So let's try again. Let's enter a password that meets the standards. So we're entering this time one with capitals and one with lowercase. Okay, and that tape admin's password has now been updated. Okay, likewise you can update individual nodes to use password um, authentication equals LDAP. And in this case I'm going to update the node Trisha. I'm going to specify right away a new password, in this case smartway123 and authentication equals LDAP. And you can see it'll come back and say, okay, that's been updated and we used a mixed case password. You can also have the user reset their password once they log on. So let's do another update. Update node tsmdr authentication equals LDAP and then we'll go and we'll start a backup archive GUI client session for that tsmdr um, node and it, you'll see how it'll prompt that user to enter a new password immediately. Okay, so we start by entering our old password, TSMDR, we log in, and it comes back and tells us we need to enter a new password, TSMDR, SmartWay123, SmartWay123, and we can change it, and it'll open up the backup archive client GUI from there. You can also reset the password for um, nodes or admins that have authentication equals local through the Active Directory. So here if we dive down into the node portion of the Active Directory, you can see we now have two TSM nodes using authentication equals LDAP. So if I take a look at Trisha, I could simply right click and choose then to do a reset password directly from there. And then I would, I could or could not choose to have a, the user reset it once again. Okay, if you want to turn LDAP authentication off, you can simply do an update node, TSM, DR in this case, and make it authentication equals local. However, you do have to specify a new password at the time that you do that. So we'll give it an old easy password, TSM, DR. And when you specify that, then the methodology will be set back to authentication of local where the TSM server is doing the authentication and now the password is set back to TSMDR. Okay, so what I've just shown you is how complex password is set up inside of the new TSM server version 6.33 server and TSM backup archive client 6.4. What we did is first of all on the LDAP server the LDAP administrator had to set up inside of Active Directory or Directory Services a new base DN for the TSM and it had to create a user, in our case that was base DN of TSM and user had um, TSM admin. We then took the certificate um, 
from that LDAP server and imported it to the TSM server into our cert.kdb in the DSM server options file. We set up the LDAP URL options inside of the DSM server option file. We restarted the TSM server and then we were able to go in there and do a set LDAP user and a set LDAP password. After that we were able to, to determine which TSM nodes and TSM um, admins we wanted to start using authentication of LDAP and so we did update node commands from them and update admin commands. Um, these were put into status of pending until the password was changed to meet compliant password rules and this could be done either through another update command or by having the user log on and create a, a new password. If this LDAP authentication wants to be removed from the TSM server admins or clients you can simply update the status back to local. Um, the other piece we did have set up was some type of secure socket layer or VPN to protect the passwords because they will now be passed in clear between the TSM server and clients and LDAP servers. Another thing to consider is that you can do these steps through the TSM Admin Center. And so in our case we showed you all these steps through the uh, command line, but if you choose you could use the um, Admin Center interface. Thank you for your time today. This is the end of the demo.